Hey everybody, so as some of you know, uh, a couple of weeks ago I had the pleasure of being in sunny San Francisco, California. It was actually quite cool that day, but that's irrelevant because I was there to see Magical Wizard Wars, so like most of the people there, I spent most of my day inside. So, I'm happy to report that the curtain is finally lifted and we are uh, open to talk about the experience that we had at the Magicka event put on by Paradox and Paradox North to talk about this uh, kind of spiritual successor to the original Magicka. It might not even be accurate to call it that, maybe a more accurate to call it a spin-off, a kind of new project for the, the, the Magicka series. Because the Magicka, you know, the first one, if you're not familiar with it, was a casting type multiplayer focused, although there was a single player component. Uh, magic game where basically it was all about zaniness you had all of these different elements which you can see on the bottom of your screen right now uh, and you have five spots that you can put those elements into and the different combinations of elements that you kind of invoke and then cast will cause different spells to happen so you know if you summon uh, five fire elements then you fire a big flamethrower in front of you if you summon uh, two rock elements and three fire elements, then maybe you'll get like a flaming rock that you can shoot at an enemy, etc, etc. Basically, it was all about the weird kind of interactions of uh, the magics that you could have, the fact that you could blow up your teammates just by using the wrong combination, or the wrong combinations in conjunction with, each, with one another. But I'm assuming at this point that we don't need a huge primer on Magicka, because, uh, you know, it obviously it's sold a ton of copies and a lot of people have played it. Uh, Magical Wizard Wars, let's talk about the differences uh, between this and Magicka. Magical Wizard Wars is a multiplayer exclusive combat arena type game. It's PvP arena combat. Now, everyone's gonna be like, oh, it's a MOBA, why don't you just call it a MOBA? I'm as sensitive as a lot of people are to that, um, you know, the, mo the defining things as MOBAs, because usually that means a certain set of things that come along with it, you know? That means that uh, there's gonna be creeps, there's no creeps in this game, that means there's gonna be towers, there's no towers in this game, and in fact, there's not even like a difference in the heroes in this game. Uh, every hero is exactly the same, and the way that you alter your stats is via equipment. I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but yes, this, this is basically just an arena combat game. It is not a MOBA, this is not meant to be uh, competitive with something like a League of Legends or a Dota, and let me explain why uh, by going over the very structure of Magical Wizard Wars. So four heroes spawn in on each side, uh, as you can see uh, right on the kind of opening screen here. They all have different kinds of equipment, if they choose to, anyway. Uh, and basically, if you look on the map, there are three different nodes, or three different kind of areas that you can capture. It's almost got like a Call of Duty style domination game mode. And uh, every time you capture one of these nodes, uh, you get points, and it also gives you a respawn location for you to respawn if you die. Now, you might also notice a score at the bottom left. Uh, this is the amount of respawns available for your team, and when that drops down to zero, then your team loses. So, as you capture these, if you capture all three of the domination points, uh, and the enemy points start ticking down, they start losing respawns, when that ticks down to zero, they lose, essentially. Uh, similarly, I, I believe if you capture all three uh, normally, you just win after a certain timer. But in any case, uh, you know, it, it's mainly focused on PvP combat. It is not about pushing lanes or anything like that. The other thing you get, by the way, uh, when you take over those nodes is, uh, I said there were no creeps. It's not 100% true. There are some small minions that spawn at the nodes to make it a little bit more difficult for people to just, you know, run in through the back door and, and take over the node uh, when you're elsewhere. Uh, the uh, other thing that I was going to talk about is uh, that there aren't really hero, like, different heroes in the game. Like, in a Dota, you know, every hero has four different abilities, or four to six different abilities, I guess. Uh, in Magicka, every hero has exactly the same abilities, which you can see on the bottom toolbar there. Sorry, Magicka Wizard Wars. Uh, and each of these uh, skills is exactly the same for every single player, and they don't have a cooldown timer on them specifically. It actually works through, or a mana cost specifically is another good way to put it, but uh, they actually work through almost like a fighting game style super meter. So as you hit, get hit, and as time passes, uh, your super meter will build up. Uh, and then you have access to the later and later skills. So there's a serious management of whether you want to save your super meter to use those high-end skills like the Meteor, which I'm so close to getting here, but probably will never will. Actually, this is uh, for StarCraft's uh, gameplay right here. Uh, mine was the first one. He's better at the game than me, so I figured it might be more interesting. So he just used the Meteor right there and probably is going to pick up a number of kills. Uh, the first skill there is Haste, which basically just makes you run faster. The second uh, allows you to raise uh, a corpse of someone, so that'll... Uh, raise one of your friends or an enemy if you mess it up uh, from the dead without actually uh, taking away from your respawn timer. The third one is it summons like a large minion that destroys enemies. Uh, in It does like one hit that does a ton of damage. Uh, and the fourth one is that Meteor ability. So this is a little unusual and it's definitely the kind of thing that if you're used to playing Dota or League of Legends, as I am used to playing Dota, uh, it 
is a little bit hard to get used to because, you know, I my, uh, I guess, natural inclination was to just pop that haste root as soon as I had the opportunity to do so every time uh, and, and chase down enemies, but that didn't necessarily work out that well for me. Uh, but yeah, it, it's definitely, I think it's going to find a more casual audience than uh, a game like Dota 2 or a game like League of Legends. And that's totally okay, because the, the most of the fun that we had in this game, uh, and remember that we only played it for a, a few hours, so it's not like we got deep into mechanics uh, growth or anything like that. Uh, it was more uh, in the zaniness of the interactions and kind of thinking on your feet to find out the right combination of elements to destroy your enemy. Now, I'll admit that I mostly uh, spent a lot of my time using exactly the same uh, elements just out of habit. You know, I was summoning like arcane beams a lot and rock plus arcane to shoot enemies. Uh, but, you know, you, enemies have a tendency to work together. You know, they'll light you on fire and then hopefully your teammate is thinking on his feet and he can just douse you with water if he's using water already. Uh, you can also give yourself, yourself shields with the guard ability and uh, elementals. So there is a kind of a, a metagame there where if you know the opponents that you're going up against, for example, if you were better than me and you're like, oh, I'm going up against Ryan, uh, he only uses arcane. You could actually give yourself an arcane shield that would block all or almost all of the damage that came out as a result of that element, or again, a, uh, a teammate could try to give that to you as well. So, you know, it, it's a little zanier than your traditional game of this type, and that's kind of cool. I think that's what's going to set it apart. This is definitely not just like, hey, we made Dota or League of Legends, but with Magicka characters. This is basically like the multiplayer of Magicka, but turned into uh, an adversarial format. So, uh, did we have fun with Magicka Wizard Wars? Absolutely. It's the kind of game that I need to spend a little bit more time with to actually uh, understand more of the strategy. I don't know if it's really going to compete with, you know, I, I don't know if there's going to be an LCS for uh, Magicka Wizard Wars, but I think it's definitely the kind of game uh, that could find an audience amongst people who uh, maybe A, loved Magicka, of which there are many of course, and B, uh, are kind of intimidated by uh, other MOBAs. I'm not sure if uh, the community for Magicka is going to be the same kind of, you know, l let's just, you know, call a spade a spade here, the same kind of assholes, myself included, that make up the community of a lot of MOBAs. Uh, so, you know, maybe this is a more accessible way to kind of enter the genre, or a more accessible way to spend time in the genre uh, than some of the games that might be a little bit more intimidating. Again, it, this is not really a MOBA. It does occupy a kind of similar uh, space, but uh, it, it's not. It's something totally different. I, I've never really played a game that had this structure, which is again why it took, there's the death uh, spawn by the way, with the third skill, uh, which is why it took me a while to get used to what I was doing, I guess. Uh, so let's talk about uh, the intangibles, I guess, with Magical Wizard Wars. It is, uh, in case you haven't divined this, I really should have mentioned this off the top, uh, but it is going to be a free-to-play game, and as far as I know, uh, they are going to have a League of Legends style series of microtransactions. So n not really Dota 2 where, you know, everything's unlocked and then it's just going to be cosmetics that you can get. You probably will be able to get cosmetics, but uh, I believe you can buy things like new staffs uh, and uh, new rings, new hats and robes, etc, etc. Uh, and each of these, by the way, carries a certain difference-making ability uh, versus... It, it, that's kind of what makes heroes or classes diverse. Uh, you know, if you put on a certain kind of hat, maybe you get extra movement speed, but you lose uh, HP. If you put on a certain robe, maybe you get uh, plus 10 to your arcane orb, uh, which is the red one down there on the bottom. Uh, but you lose, uh, you know, 5 from your fire and 5 from your healing, etc, etc. Anyway, uh, so I believe stuff like that is going to be for sale and might also be able to earn via in-game currency. It's way too early to tell. Uh, but this is uh, my impression of Magical Wizard Wars. Overall positive, there is a... Uh, alpha sign-up, I believe it's entering alpha September? I th it's sometime this near fall or late summer, I believe. Uh, so check out the link in the video description, wizardwars.com, you can sign up for the alpha. Again, it is free. Uh, yeah, so that is Magic of Wizard Wars. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know it's a little bit of a departure for what I normally do. Uh, and keep an eye out for more Magic uh, Wizard Wars coverage as we get closer to release. So as always, thanks for watching. You can peep the link in the video description if you want to sign up for the free alpha uh, whenever it comes out. And I will see you next time.